Coming up, car break-ins raise concern for local citizens. Complaints are being heard of handicap permits being misused. And we have a look into your local weather forecast with Lucas Hicks and local sports with Joshua Harrell. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome back to News Valdosta. I'm Stacy Bush. And I'm Jennifer Dandron. The Valdosta police have been busy handling a lot of cases involving theft by breaking into cars. The police are urging car owners to take proper precaution. Our own Robin Carter has more. Thanks. The Lowndes County Police Department is cautioning all who leave electronic devices within their vehicles. The police department says that there has been an increasing amount of auto thefts. They've had 17 incidents, and out of those 17, 14 of those incidents have involved electronic devices. The police department says that you should take these devices with you if you can, and if you cannot, you should place them under the seat or in the trunk where they are not clearly visible. The police department says that they thank all who are taking these precautions as they are cracking down on this issue. I am Robin Carter for News Valdosta. Back to you, ladies. Reports say that thieves have gotten away with other items such as credit cards, car stereos, driver's licenses, and social security cards. Again, it is advised by Valdosta police that all valuables be hidden in the trunk or removed from the car when not being watched thoroughly. Remember to lock car doors and roll up windows. Valdosta police have arrested two men that they feel are in connection with two burglaries that happened on Brigston and Johnson South Road. Allegedly, Christopher Paulette and Emmanuel Trevino Vasquez burglarized the two homes and stole appliances, toys, and yard equipment that they later sold on sites such as Craigslist. Officers have found some of the stolen items but have not identified the true owners. Some homeowners in the process of moving came back to retrieve items only to find that they were missing. Both men are in custody and are behind bars at Lowndes County Jail. The Valdosta State Police Department has sent out an email to all students and faculty on Monday saying that there have been complaints of people misusing disabled parking permits. The email includes Georgia law in regards to the crime. The law says that anyone who stops, stands, or parks at a, ve a vehicle in a handicapped parking spot without a valid permit or has a permit slash license plate with the handicap logo that is not issued to them could be fined up to $500. Valdosta State Police urge anyone that sees anyone violating this rule to call them. The Popeye's restaurant in Albany on South Sloppy Boulevard was robbed Monday night and managers reported that three men rushed to the restaurant through the back door as an employee proceeded to take out the trash. One robber was reported armed with a shotgun. Police are now questioning whether this case is linked to a robbery that happened across the street. Police are still investigating this case and no arrests have been made. Police urge any inf anyone with information to call Crime Stoppers. 20-year-old Kenyattis Brown was arrested yesterday night for allegedly hitting his girlfriend with a broom. After striking her with the broom, Brown escaped and was caught by police. Brown is charged with battery, criminal trespassing, escape, and the obstruction of an officer. A pedestrian survived being hit by a train yesterday. Reports say this incident happened near Martin Luther King Drive in Tifton and an officer from the Georgia State Patrol is investigating the case. No name for either the pedestrian or the train's company have been reported yet. Still to come, arthritis patients get a chance to exercise. A study shows that some painkillers lead to a greater chance of birth defects while pregnant. Plus, we have your local weather forecast and sports updates. All this and more when we come back. Stay with us. You didn't give up on sex, don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org.
Welcome back. South Georgia Medical Center has relief for people who suffer with arthritis. The secret? Exercise. Arthritis patients can participate in a class taught twice a week that offers a low intensity workout routine that can improve flexibility as well as increase range of motion. This class is tomorrow at 10 in the morning and taught by a PACE certified trainer. To attend, call the Cardiac Rehab Center. This class will have a small fee that will need to be paid before participation in the class. Researchers are conducting a study that they believe may link autism with the induction of labor. With induction, doctors speed up labor by stimulating contractions before the labor naturally begins. Many times, this is necessary for mothers that may have certain health conditions that may pose harm to the mother or baby. Lead researcher Simon Gregory from Duke University says that the mother should not use this study in determining whether or not to induce labor, and that the study does not prove that this is the primary cause of autism. Speak with your healthcare professional to learn more and pick the right decision for you. Pregnant mothers beware as a study conducted by the CDC outlines that the use of such drugs as Oxycontin, Vicodin, and Percocet can lead to a greater chance of your baby having spina, spina bifida. With usage of these drugs during the early stages of pregnancy, a defect to the, the neural tube is twice as likely to happen causing the disorder. Doctors encourage expecting moms to do their research and talk to their healthcare professional to possibly see an alternative option for pain medicine to increase their chances for a healthy little one. Wiregrass Georgia Technical College's own employees, Betty Smith and Sylvia Lockett, were acknowledged for their hard work for completing the manager and program improvement certification. Both of these ladies completed the two-year program that stresses research, professional wisdom, and practices in the area of adult education. Both have also become directors of adult education services in various counties in South Georgia. It has been almost a full month after the Lowndes County Board of Education put into effect Sheriff Chris Prine's plan to put one full-time DARE and school resource officer in all of the six elementary schools around the area. Superintendent Wes Taylor says that since the deputies have arrived on the school campuses, deputies have received positive feedback from schools personnel and parents. The deputies are quickly becoming a part of the school staff at the individual schools and are an asset to each staff. This service provided by the sheriff is important for safety and security and serves also as a learning experience for our students. Sheriff Prine says that through the day-to-day -day interaction with the deputies, students are learning to see law enforcement in a positive light. Sheriff Prine's intentions for the plan were to ensure safety and protection for the children. The plan was put into effect the same day as it was presented in the elementary school's first day of school. News Valdosta Arts reporter Olivia Steen went out into the community to find out just how much Valdosta knows about quilting. Olivia? The Willacoochee Quilters Guild is having its biannual members exhibition at the Annette Howell Turner Center for the Arts. The Guild is a nonprofit organization with an interest in preserving and promoting the art of quilting. There are currently 75 members of the Guild. We've had as many as 82 in a year's time, but we have a lot of uh, uh, military people come and join the Guild, and so they might stay two years and then have to move on and so on and so forth. It's just a fun group of ladies to share time with and learn to quilt and teach to how to quilt. For years and years and years in the Quilt Guild we've done community projects and we've done for various reasons and this year we're, well and last year also, we're making quilts for any child in the county and surrounding areas that have serious illnesses and I've already given close to 15 away uh, children that's had kidney transplants, cancer and so forth. And uh, over the years, the, the guild is like 26 years old, and I would say we've probably given close to a thousand quilts away. The guild's monthly meetings are held on the second Monday of each month, 6.30 p.m. at Grace Bible Church. They also have their sit and sew meets every Wednesday morning from 9 a.m. to noon. Visitors are welcome at all meetings. As you can see, quilts supply multiple ways of comfort. To some, they provide warmth, but to others, they are a way of expression and art. My name is Olivia Steen, and you're watching VSU TV. Thanks, Olivia, for that update. When we come back, Apple plans to do it again with the iPhone 5S. Find out what your credit score and Facebook have in common.
And stay tuned for a look at your local weather and a sports update. Valdosta State University, encouraging, in-depth inquiry, hands-on experience, service and involvement, and a global view, while offering a beautiful residential campus, over 100 fields of study, graduate and online degrees, and championship athletics, all in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Do more, become more. Valdosta State University. Just when you thought you were up to date with the iPhone 5, Apple does it again with the iPhone 5S. CEO of Apple, Tim Cook, says that this phone is the most forward-thinking phone ever. The 5S is expected to have a biometric fingerprint sensor that can read sub-epidermal skin layers. The phone will have the same design as the 5 and will come in three different colors, one being gold. This phone is the first with a 64-bit processor, making it twice as fast as the 5 and will aid in the preservation of battery life. The retail price will range from $200 to $400, depending on the gigabyte storage size, and is able to be pre-ordered this Friday. Well, the weekend is a few days away, but how is today and tomorrow looking for us? Our own Lucas Hicks has the weather. Lucas? Thanks, Stacy. It is a very, very lovely day today with a high of 90 degrees. So make sure you go outside, enjoy the sunshine, and there's not going to be any chance of rain. Tonight, as we enter into September, it's going to be a low of 68 degrees and clear. Um, so, and then uh, tomorrow is going to also be a high of 92. Um, much like uh, as we're entering into the September months, um, the weather's going to start to cool down. Um, as time goes on. The skin index is at a level of 10, which is awesome um, if you really like sun poisoning. So make sure you throw on some sunscreen and wear sunglasses if you go outside and stay, and stay in the sunlight. There is a medium pollen index. Um, so if you, have, um, if you have bad allergies, or you're allergic to ragweeds and chinopods, Make sure you take some allergy medication. Back to you, girls. Turned down for a loan recently? Ever heard the phrase, you are the company you keep? CNN reports that many lending agencies are turning to social media sites such as Twitter and Facebook to determine loan eligibility. Lindo and Credit Tech are using these sites to see if negligent debt payers are part of your inner circle. Companies like this look at your history of likes, retweets, statuses, friends, and determine whether an applicant should be approved for a loan. Usually, to be approved, lenders will run a credit check that can take a while to process. Browsing a social media site is quicker and more convenient. Close interaction with people who have legal issues and statuses about financial trouble could interfere with your ability to receive the loan. When we come back, Sports with Joshua. Stay with us. Did you know kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs? Totally. I did. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terra cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. It's totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you know that strollers have the right of way on the sidewalk? Yes. Yep, I did. Did you guys did know? Did you know that kids who eat breakfast have higher GPAs? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. That's actually what I was going to say. Did you know babies should never touch silver? It's really bad for them. I knew that. Did you guys know that statistically friendly kids have more friends? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. That's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. I'm putting that on my blog. I just put it in mine. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back. Let's see what our sports anchor, Joshua Harrell, has to say about sports. Joshua? Thank you, ladies. In local sports news, we saw the Lady Blazers volleyball team sweep all three sets with Albany State last night in VSU's home opener. With that win, the Lady Blazers have improved their record to 5-0 and and go on their way to having a great season. It will be military night this Friday at the Lowndes County High School Stadium. All military personnel will be admitted free of charge to the football game against Windsor Forest. For more, for more, about, that, this, for more about the game, here's Daniel Shadle. After an upsetting loss of 15-14 against Newton, the Lowndes County Vikings are hitting the practice field hard this week to prepare for their upcoming faceoff against the Windsor Forest Knights at home. Tickets may be purchased for Friday's game at the ticket office at 1592 Norman Drive. Office hours are Monday through Thursday from 12.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. With such a young team, the Vikings are beginning to train up new players in order to fill the shoes of last year's graduates. Many of the coaches stated that their strong points were in the defense rather than their young offense. I had the privilege of speaking with Coach McPherson about the team's strengths and weaknesses and what they are doing to improve both. This year our strengths, I, I, I feel like our linebackers is, is a strength. All four of them are back from last year. Uh, that would be at the top of the list. Okay. Uh, we're a little bit young in spots, a little bit inexperienced and, uh, you know, uh, Got tested the other night, and some of our unexperienced, inexperienced showed, you know. So we, uh, we still got a ways to go. This Friday night is Military Appreciation Night. All active and retired military personnel, their spouses or one guest, as well as their children, will be admitted for free on the visitor's side to Friday's game. I'm Daniel Shadle with News Valdosta. The Lady Cats, the Lady Wildcats softball team will be in action this afternoon at at home against the Westover Patriots, who are still searching for that elusive first win. The Wildcats are hoping to turn things around as they only have two wins this season. One of those wins come against the Patriots late last month. The Lowndes County Vicats also played a doubleheader at home against the Coffee County Trojans yesterday. The Lady Vicats have now started diving headfirst into their region play and with a record 12-2 and are poised to bring home the Region 1 6A title. The Vicats will be looking for another win in, in the win column when they play Tattanoe County Warriors who are 9-1. and one. In other sports news, Darton, head, Darton College's head athletic trainer Becky Brewer says that the heat has, has little to do with the recent hospitalization of Darton College wrestlers. The Brewer says that dehydration led to the incidents and that the heat index was, was well within heat safety policy that Darton College has in place. Rob Roars did say that Ben Richards did suffer from a heat stroke. It was caused from not rehydrating from the practice the day before. That's it for sports. Back to Stacey and Jennifer at the news desk. Thanks, Joshua. Up next, Valdosta remembers the victims and heroes from this day and Wiregrass honors two staff members. Stay with us. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. 
But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Welcome back. Today marks the day to honor the fallen heroes and victims of the 9-11 attack that happened 12 years ago. This morning at 8.45 a.m., News Valdosta's Amber Worthy joined the citizens of Valdosta to remember those who lost their lives in the tragic attack on America on September 11, 2001. Fire Chief J.D. Rice, Mayor John Gale, and a few others spoke about what they remember about this heartbreaking day in American history. 343 New York firefighters lost their lives in this event. A flag was presented to both the fire chief and chief of police. Thank you for watching News Valdosta. I'm Stacy Bush. And I'm Jennifer Dandron. Have a nice day, and we'll see you next time.